How did you end up in the arms of Antifa? Did you find them or did they find you? So it's, it's a very complicated story, but I can really boil it down to this. When I first came to this country, I hated America. And the reason I hated it, it was because I had two different groups of people planting seeds in my head to be an anti-American person. First of all, it was Spanish networks like Univision and Telemundo. A lot of their media, I mean, a lot of people talk about CNN being biased, but really they just don't speak Spanish to see what's going on there because a lot of their stories are uniquely targeted to Hispanics to make them feel marginalized and make it, make it seem like it's uh, Hispanics against America. But not only that, also in middle school and high school, I had several different radical left-wing teachers who basically told me to hate America. I had one specific one, he was a biology teacher. And I remember instead of teaching us biology, he would stand in front of the classroom and call us stupid if we believed in God. And of course, his children weren't stupid because he raised them to be atheists. And I mean, once you're bombarded with so many uh, anti-American beliefs and sentiments, it's easy for somebody growing up in this country to begin to hate America. And eventually, that's how I joined the anti-fascist movement, because I was preconditioned to hate this country. So you, you sought them out, is what you're saying. You were like, OK, I, this place is terrible. Uh, these guys are fighting against it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go join them. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, the first time I put on the black mask was in uh, Claremont, California in 2011. And I saw that the National Socialist Movement, which is a terribly racist group, was coming to, to close to my city. And I was fired up. I wanted to do something. And I believe that America and the neo-Nazis were one and the same. I mean, these people are the type of people that wear the American flag and also a, a Nazi symbol. But not only that, I also saw the police defending the right to free speech. So and my young mind kept thinking, well, they're one and the same. The police and the Nazis they are all working together. I didn't understand that America is much more complicated than that. There are competing rights that we must live with because otherwise that hurts our republic. Even as hateful as some people may be in like who are Nazis or who are straight fascists, like legitimate fascists, they deserve the right to free speech because that's what America is all about. Okay, so you, you join Antifa, you get out there, you put on the black mask. What made you change your mind about it? Did you start to see that the violence was for violence sake or did you start to read or listen to different voices? What made you question, hey, wait a second, these guys might not be doing what's right here? Yeah, so I first started having questions about the anti-fascist movement. Um, well, I was involved for about a year and a half, but I first started having questions when my economics teacher introduced me to great economic minds like Milton Friedman and Thomas Sowell. Now, I gotta tell you, I think they're great now, but at the time, I didn't like them, but I found them interesting. So what I wanted to do was debate these issues. Well, my friends, they were all part of the anti-fascist movement. And, you know, for being an anarchist at the time, that was the very first time I was called a capitalist pig. <laughs> Just for asking questions. That's when I started to realize that, you know, these people aren't... I don't, mean, uh, to, I don't mean to laugh at that. I'm sorry. I'm la I don't mean to laugh at that. But, okay, keep going. Yeah, I mean, and that's when I realized that these people are not interested in having conversations and searching for truth. Antifa is about destruction. Antifa does not stand for something. It stands against everything they don't like. And that it is American society. All right, I gotta, I, I gotta ask the conspiracy th theory question. You know, we know somebody's sure. funding. You know where I'm going. Did, mm -hmm. did the name George Soros? Did that, was that ever bounced around, or is that just, you know, something you didn't hear at all? No, and you know, and behind the black mask, I specifically talk about um, the funding issue. Uh, a lot of people want to say that George Soros is funding this because, like, you know, he's a, a big donor in, in, on the left, but. Antifa is much more dangerous than this, because if it's some national organization funding this, then we can take it down. But it's Antifa is organized in a very grassroots manner, and that's very dangerous, because it reveals that there's countless of young Americans who are feel justified and feel righteous in actually attacking people. They're not motivated by money. What, a, you know, what about when they finally get you know, some payback, because we've seen enough videos of, you know, you see a group of people, black block, black masks, you know, the mm -hmm. umbrellas, all that stuff, and then they get served, you know, pretty hard by someone they didn't expect would actually take a swing back. Does that change any minds when, when you know, because Mike Tyson always said, everyone's got to <laughs> play until they get punched in the face. 
I mean, uh, every time I hear that people are meeting on the streets, um, I actually find that a little bit dangerous. Because every time you meet them on the streets, let's say that uh, some proud Americans, they go ahead and they start, they, they meet Antifa on the streets and they beat them up. Well, what happens the next day? Antifa decides to come back with more people and then they beat up these Americans. And well, these other Americans, they come back with more people and they start beating up Antifa. Eventually, this cycle of violence continues and you have bigger brawls on the street. And then eventually things escalate as we've been seeing. Antifa is beginning to murder people like we saw in Portland. I mean, uh, meeting on them on the streets is not the solution. I think we need to pressure politicians like Mayor Ted Wheeler in Portland to finally crack down on Antifa because the government is really a neutral party who can, uh, who can really maintain peace. If, if you go back and study the history of German Antifa, which was born out of out of mm -hmm. the fall of the Nazi Party, right? It was people that started uh, just harassing government workers who were leftovers from from the old Nazi government. Then it became more more dark and more violent. But their their basic plan was to appear at least a structural because they thought that U.S. Uh, intelligence operatives were in Berlin and they didn't want people looking into their activities. Is that true for American Antifa? Is it really this just sort of, you know, ragtag cabal or is there a little bit more of an organizing structure around it? Well, the best way to understand Antifa is not to see it as a group or an idea like Joe Biden likes to say. The best way to understand Antifa is to see it as a movement. And within this movement, you have several different radical left-wing organizations. Some of them use the name of Antifa, such as Rose City Antifa, but many do not. At the, at the end of the day, though, uh, all these groups use the label of Antifa to hide behind, so they don't really identify the real, uh, the real names of the groups that they're involved with. All right, Rose City Antifa, I know, is allegedly the oldest. Mm -hmm. What do these people do for a living? Like, where do they go, you know, outside of, you know, the lockdowns? Where do they go to work? Where, you know, do they, where do they go home at night? Like, where do these people go when this is all over? Sooner or later, they you know, it's all over, and they, you know, they take their black bandanas and hoodie sweatshirts off, and they go home. What are most of them like when they're not in the black block garb? Well, a lot of them do have jobs, and they try to like. Uh, for example, when I was I was 17 at the time, but I had a job, and I work at a factory. And a lot of the money that I earned, I definitely put back into my activism, whether it be paying for transportation or getting supplies like spray spray paint, all that thing, all those things. But one thing that a lot of people don't understand about it, American Antifa at least, is that it started in 1988 as a music movement with the anti-racist action. If you look at the punk culture and the, the anarcho-punk culture, those were the original groups. So that's still in, in present today. Uh, a lot of times, if you, especially in Portland, you will see that they have a, a, a lively punk scene. And they have a lot of bookshops and a lot of cultural things. Because to them, Antifa is more than just politics. It's a very cultural thing, which is why so many young people are drawn to it. Because it's a community that they all can be part of. Yeah, well, I can tell you, I'm wearing a blue suit and a black tie right now, but on most normal days, I'm wearing a Misfits t-shirt or something like that. I, I grew up listening to punk rock, and I can't stand that they hijacked it that way. By the way, Johnny Ramone, huge conservative uh, before, he, <laughs> before, before he died. But that's, I want to move into a, a different angle real quick. You, you said earlier about the Nazis, and I, I said to you as we were setting up the interview, the problem that we face with Antifa and, and the sort of academic or dare I say, intellectual uh, push behind it is that they're trying to import that Nazi national socialist versus communist dynamic and claim anyone who's against them is a Nazi. Constitutional conservatives, libertarians, those people were, there, there was no such, there was no part of that yeah. equation in Germany. And it's like, they don't understand that I don't like Nazis either, right? I, I don't want e a, a part of either one of them. I'm not taking either side here. I'm a constitutional conservative and a libertarian. You can't call a libertarian a fascist. It's li libertarians are the opposite of fascists. Exactly. I mean, and, and the problem is that so many professors are not really teaching students how to think. They're teaching them what to think. And it's because they see themselves as activists first and educators second. And I mean, it really all goes back to college campuses. Uh, again, my book, Behind the Black Mask, it reveals basically the Antifa network wide open and a lot of the things that I did. But the book is more than that. In my book, I describe the activism that I've done as a conservative activist for the last five years. 
And I can tell you that so many professors belittle conservative thought. They, they treat conservative students and libertarian students, for that matter, as if they were criminals. And that's just not right, because as educators, they have, a, they have this position of authority that so many left-wing students they, they begin to believe them and say, well, this conservative student is a criminal. I should attack them because I'm defending people. I mean, their mentality is just outrageous. And every single day, young students are, are sit in these classes and learn to be more hateful against people who disagree with them. All right, uh, last question. Um, this is super interesting stuff. Has there been any backlash? Any of any of your old uh, comrades uh, you know, tried to dox you or come after you and say, hey, man, you're a sellout? Uh, have you had any backlash since leaving and writing this book? So one of the cool, what, not really cool, one of the good things about Antifa is that a lot of people cycle out. And at least in the younger parts, typically those people who stay in longer, they're the more dangerous. But for me, I was only involved for about a year and a half. And that was in 2011, 2012. And then for about five, six years, I stayed silent. I didn't really talk about it. So those people who were once my comrades, they're not even part of the movement, as, as, as far as I can tell, at the very least. Um, so I've been thankful that nobody, has even, nobody that I was ever organized with has even like, noticed that I'm doing this. Um, but you know something? It is, I, I, do, I do get a lot of um, negative things happening. I mean, I was just at Virginia Tech a few, uh, a few days ago, and I had a bunch of different self-proclaimed members of Antifa try to disrupt my event. Uh, this girl specifically, she would not just, she, every time I said something, she would just start yelling at me, calling me a fascist, calling me all the names. And I mean, you have to remember that even though maybe my comrades are no longer involved, there's always new people getting involved into the Antifa movement. And it's a growing problem because it's growing worse and worse by the day. Again, super interesting stuff, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it.